Hey guys, Desolator Magic here. Remember that uh, collector booster product that a lot of people didn't like because it really encourages gambling because you could open it and get a 50 cent pack or you could get a $200 pack? Yeah, it turns out it made a bunch of money by psychologically manipulating weak-minded people. Yay! So it's back for Theros Beyond Death, which by the way is THB, not TBD. Do they know how acronyms work? So... I just read this and I got so damn confused and I had to correct so many things I said in this article because of the idiotic way that they wrote it that I'm actually re-recording this from scratch. So if I sound a little bit pissed off a little bit earlier in the video than normal, it's because I am. So let me just correct the bullshit in real time for you and just save you some time. Hell, I'll save you a lot of time. Don't buy this. There you go. So these are the different card treatments, as they call it, that you could pull. The Foil Showcase Nyx Basics. What they mean by showcase is not. They're just the Foil Nyx Basics. They make them sound like there's some different thing and oh, it's extended art. But once you finally look at them side by side and then read one of the last sentences in this damn article, you realize that no, they're not a showcase frame. Or, well, I guess you could say they're all showcase frames, all of them. But then you get two of these. But by two in each collector's booster, they mean at least two, you can actually pull ten. Are you with me so far? I didn't think so. So to reiterate, you're guaranteed two, but you might pull more, and they aren't a showcase frame. They're the same as the foil one you might pull out of a regular booster. Next, we've got the extended art frame, and if you look at that compared to borderless, you think, what the hell is the difference? Well, the extended art kind of technically still has a little bit of a border that it kind of fades into. So it's like a semi-borderless. If you just remember that one distinguishing feature, you'll be able to identify like, is this this, this, or this? Then we have the actual showcase frames, which share a name with the basic lands for some reason. Even though it's a textless full art is what the actual term is. It's not a showcase and these are not the same things. So by constellation showcase, they mean not cards that have constellation written on them. They finally reveal later that it's only going to be limited to the, um, oh, let me find the line in here. I already lost it. Oh, the um, gods and demigod cards. And that's it. So just once again, as a reminder, the, the equivalent to this would be the fancy like card frames that kind of look like masterpieces a little bit from Throne of Eldraine. Like those showcase cards were just stylized a little heavier. They didn't really have a consistent look. They just looked fancier, I guess. Different art, different text box, different colors and stuff. And uh, well, you can see what this one looks like, except this is the worst possible example because this is... Uh, the legendary frame, first of all, so they don't all look like this, all the spikes and crap on the top, that's because he's legendary. So they don't all look like that necessarily unless they're also legendary. So that that frame mod has nothing to do with the showcase frame. Uh, but if you look at like his power and toughness being uh, white and then in like a box with like a special color behind it, that's the showcase frame. Although they've already done this, and you know, with the semi-transparent but like partially black overlay on the text box where the art keeps going yeah they've done that too before it already has a name but they've now called it the showcase uh const the constellation showcase frame even though once again to reiterate it has nothing to do with the constellation mechanic got it you can only imagine how pissed off i got in the first version of this video so as far as i can tell by their cryptic clues when you put them all together because uh, let's be honest, it's because Blake wrote this. Um, there are five uncommon demigods, and then there's six rares. But we don't know what they are, but they're, they're probably, if you look at another clue elsewhere in the article, they'll be the gods. So there will be six gods, five demigods, and this could be any of those 11. Uh, then we got the borderless planeswalkers, real simple. It's probably Elspeth or uh, Ashiok, maybe a third one that we haven't seen so far. I mean, we're probably going to see Gideon, just saying. But uh, yeah, this one's actually exactly what it sounds like. It's a Planeswalker card. The art goes all the way to the border. Yes, it's technically called a full bleed, but I guess they didn't want to call it that. So those are the different card treatments you can get in this stupid overpriced product that is probably not going to be available in your area. I mean, they shipped, from what I heard, one-tenth of what they were supposed to, to Europe, just like Europe in general. So distributors there were under the impression they were getting, I will just say a hundred thousand boxes. And then they got like 10,000. That's the way I heard it went down. So 
to say there's not enough to go around and orders were getting canceled would be an understatement. And then after the dust settled, they sent a second wave. I can't think of a way to screw up a product launch worse than that. I, nothing comes to mind immediately. So this chart right here is the, the new breakdown of the order of the cards in the booster. Now, how does this differ from the last one? I have no idea. Too lazy to check, and fun fact, this entire chart and this entire list is misleading bullshit. So after I got done trying to make any semblance of sense with this open-ended vague bullshit that they've got here, I found out that it was rewritten by Blake on this. I guess because they realized that there's a bunch of it's up for interpretation shit on here, not to mention misleading names. So ignore that whole thing, we'll be working off the Blake version. I can't believe I just said that, that Blake wrote something better than whoever made this, who's hopefully fired. Whatever intern made this, just seriously, the cards aren't even level. Like, just get a different job, you suck. Oh, by the way, you might have already noticed, um, Blake's list is not in order that they are in the pack. So there's that. So you will get, in not this order, Two premium foil basic mix lands. And then he finally reveals, these are the full art lands showcasing mix art that we showed off last week. Every collector's booster comes with two foil versions of these sweet lands. So you know how they called them showcase lands? They're not. They're the same foil lands that you could theoretically pull out of a normal booster. They're not a showcase frame. Either that or they're all showcase frames. Whichever way you want to go with that. In my opinion, it's an extended art textless card. And by opinion, I mean that is factually what those are called. You know, historically, when they've printed cards identical to this before. Anyway, the next item on his list is what's actually in the front of the booster in the first slot. He skipped ahead to like 13 with that first one. I don't know, whatever. Uh, eight premium foil, common, uncommon, or as they put above, basic lands. Now... He wrote it as non Nyx basic lands. What the f is Nyx? What does non Nyx mean? I, I legitimately don't remember if the name of the plane is Nyx or Theros. <laughs> or if it's like people from the outside call it Theros and then people who live there call it Nyx. I, I don't know. What does non Nyx basic lands mean? Does it mean foil basic lands from a set other than Theros Beyond Death? How hard would it be to type that? So to potentially correct what I said earlier, because I thought I had this all down, but apparently it takes a third reading of this, you're guaranteed two foil basic lands from this set, which I just realized are called Nyx basics. Okay, that kind of gives it away. But then I said, oh, well, you could get more because the chart above said foil common, uncommon, or basic land. And, you know, pardon me, I thought since it's called the Theros Beyond Death Collector's Booster that they meant the basic lands from that. But no, apparently they, they could potentially be foil lands from who knows. I'll say M13 Buttered Popcorn Lands. Hopefully that's what's in there. That would be nice. Look those up, by the way. They're actually worth a bit of money. So he breaks it down as there are 111 commons, including non nix basic lands. Well, no, there are no non nix basic lands in the set, except there technically are because they just confirmed that you'll get, I can't imagine what the artwork would look like, but you're going to get regular lands in the bundle, AKA the fat pack. Uh, you know how it says you get 20 foils, 20 non, and people were assuming, oh, it's like BFZ, all 40, except for BFZ, it was 80, of the lands will be the special lands, which in BFZ's case was extended art, or full art. Uh, this time around, no, you'll get some kind of weird, one-off, unique, basic land that you can't get anywhere else, maybe in like the welcome deck or something? And then in this collector's booster, oh boy, how rare and sought after you could accidentally get a foil of one of those. Oh boy, how exciting. I'm so sure you wouldn't prefer instead the really fancy looking ones in foil. But like I said, you get two of those, so cool. So ignore this entire slot, all eight of them, because yeah, it's eight foils. Ooh, whoop to do cool. Um, They're all basically commons and uncommons, so... The odds of anything in this being worth above like a dollar are like one in 20 on a good day. So that's just filler jank and they're going to curl and just ignore them. Uh, then you get one ancillary card, which, um, boy, I'll just read what he wrote first. 
Each booster will contain one card from a Theros Beyond deck ancillary release, including Planeswalker decks, which includes the really shitty cards, uh, theme boosters, which... Since when do theme boosters have unique cards you can't get in the regular booster? That's a whole different news story. And the buy a box promo. Now, last time around, the ancillary slot could include the Brawl deck cards. So does that mean that there won't be Theros Beyond Death Brawl decks? I guess. I, I think they said they're doing... No, wait. No, it was Ikoria that they're doing the Commander ones instead. I don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> I don't know. Last time everybody wanted in the ancillary slot, the buy box promo or Steelbane Hydra, which was in one of the damn Brawl decks. Thanks for that fragmentation, wizards, you jackasses. So yeah, the ancillary card um, extends to the really shitty filler summoning go fetch crap from the Planeswalker decks. Oh boy. It could be the front card too, though, but I believe what they said in the last documentation about it, but not this one, because, you know, God forbid they put all the information in one place, that if you do get the front card from the Planeswalker decks, it won't be foil, which is actually, like, really rare, but also at the same time, completely worthless. But let's let's return to the whole, you'll get a unique card from the theme boosters. Aren't the theme boosters the color-locked things? Why the hell are they moving unique cards you can only get in them to them? Because that's bullshit. Don't they know that they're getting enough backlash from the customers already about this shit? Where now instead of just opening a standard booster and getting the cards you, you can play standard with, all of them. Now you've got maybe the gift pack, maybe the bundle promo, maybe the buy a box promo, maybe some brawl decks, maybe some planeswalker decks, depending upon if they felt like making them, because the next five sets they're going to on and off make them and then not then you've got the unique cards from the welcome deck like for example if i were to go into the past um oh, i can't remember that one's sphinx well then you can only get the card there i, I mean they got to the point with eldraine that i think like maybe only 70 or 80 percent of the cards in the set could actually be gotten from the main boosters which was pathetic and it's all just a, a cash grab borderline scam to get you to buy, oh, now I gotta buy this, I gotta buy the Brawl deck, I need Steelbane Hydra, so I need a Brawl deck, then I need this, then I need this, then I need this. It's just trying to get you to buy more shit. When, in reality, everybody knows the effect is just to say, screw it, I'm not even gonna open boosters, I'm just gonna buy singles. Which, obviously, is more efficient, which means that it results in you spending less money, so hooray for you, but then you spend less money and it all goes to giant online single-point sellers. Not to the 6,000 WPN locations, also known as your local gaming store. And boy were people ripping them a new ass on Reddit over this shit, so this better end real quick. Oh, and uh, FYI, it's also pretty much a scam to get you to use more uh, wild cards on Arena. Because these cards literally cannot come out of a booster. That was at least 50% of the motivation for it, in my opinion. So Wizards, um, cut the shit, put all the cards we need in the boosters. Or we're not gonna buy the boosters. And this has been getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse over the last two years. Just... Stop with this bullshit trend, stop with the Planeswalker decks, stop with all these side products, unless they're side products where we can get the cards elsewhere, okay? Requiring us to buy more stupid shit is really aggravating. But no, like I said, this seems to very strongly state that an ancillary card that you can't get from a normal booster is now in the theme boosters, so now you have to buy those stupid overpriced you know, time-wasting, card-wasting, bulk-infested shitholes that are the theme boosters. And at any given time, your LGS is probably going to be out of two of the five colors. Like, whichever has the most expensive cards in it. What an absolute corner Wizards has backed themselves into. This is so stupid. So anyway, moving on, uh, number five, which is once again not number five in the order, um, is one premium foil rare or mythic card. These can be either standard frame or foil versions of the collector booster frame, point number four above. Uh, it's not, by the way. Point number four is borderless, unless he means on the above diagram, which also isn't that. So when he says foil versions of the collector booster frame, what he actually means is the showcase frame, even he refuses to use their own terminology, and I'm only about 70% sure that that's actually what he meant. 
So what are you really going to get in this stupid overpriced shit booster? Uh, I don't know. Blake doesn't know. Wizards doesn't know. Nobody knows. Who knows? Just don't open it. Don't buy it. That's my recommendation. So next, you could get one non-foil saga or constellation showcase frame card, which really have nothing to do with each other, but okay. Um, these can be uncommon, rare, or mythic rare, and can also include the borderless planeswalkers. And by include, he means be that instead, because that isn't included in the constellation or saga list, which, once again, has nothing to do with constellation, in case you forgot that. And then uh, the next one is the same exact thing, but it could be foil. So you do have two shots at the Borderless Planeswalkers, which is kind of nice. And then uh, finally, you get one premium foil token. It's, du it's a double-sided token. I guess he didn't feel like telling you that. From Theros Beyond Death. Now, if you're thinking, oh yeah, the double-sided token, I just heard about that. No, that was the Ikoria ones. And they're different because those are probably punch-out cards and they're just not telling us. Also, you can't have a foil punch-out card. Uh, yeah, you could, but... No, actually, really, you can. I've tried ripping those. You know, that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. So, if there's like 10 different tokens that you could make through this set, which is probably an average number, are there five different double-sided tokens? Are there, what would they be, 25 different ones if, if it's a random front or back? Or is it the same two like the FNM promos? We don't know. So, the variance in that slot is either zero, five, or a lot. But here's the fun kicker, it doesn't matter because they're completely worthless. At this print volume, guaranteed one per, yeah, those will be like 25 cents. There were people, I kid you not, asking me why I didn't calculate the EV, aka like the return, the expected value, the average value of one of these boosters. It's because I can't figure out what the f*** is in them or what the cards are worth. And like this list made it 10 times worse. And I'd have to just guess at some of the values because some stuff in here is not only mislabeled as a product and, and described wrong and described in two different ways, one in the chart and one by Blake, but um, you'd never be able to guess the price until you see it. Well, as in, like, see it being sold on eBay. So the Collector's Booster is going to be one giant confusing shit show. Um, I, I think altogether we have about a 90% confidence what'll be in it. And I'm just getting a feel for the variance. It's a little bit lower. And, and honestly, the, the big takeaway from this is the two foil lands the fancy pantsy lands those have got to be worth two to three bucks a piece minimum minimum i mean the foil ones from the last unset were like what 40 to 100 or something it was absurd uh the bfz ones were like i think 10 a piece across the board pretty much kind of wavered from there so I'd like to say that these are worth you know even five bucks a piece but i thought these collectors boosters were about 10 ish little over 10 a piece which, strangely, that was nowhere in this article. Anything even resembling the cost, but, oh, there is no cost. It's all based on demand because we got rid of MSRPs. Yeah, bullshit. You know, w once again, for like the hundredth time, f*** this, I'm just going to log into my vendor's website and see what they cost. Okay, they don't have them listed at all, including the Eldraine ones. That's weird. Well, I didn't go all the way here for nothing. Uh, the Theros Beyond Death Deck Builders Toolkit, that's still a thing. $11.82 cost at the distributor. Uh, we got the uh, Theros Beyond Death Bundles. Those are $23.65. Boy, those went up. Um, and like I said, Mark Rosewater himself personally said that the uh, 40 card packs, the lands, are not going to be the full art. You get 20 foil, 20 knot, and all 40 are not going to be the special extended art showcase, whatever the actual hell they're calling them. Nick's lands. Uh, they got five different names at this point. A display of theme boosters, which I don't know how many are in there, is $41.30. Uh, the, what is this? Oh, the Planeswalker deck. Okay, that's a weird way to phrase it. Uh, those, I don't know what those come in a pack of, but they're uh, 53.17. I think it's six. Yeah, description says six, three each. And the booster box, watch out, 8477. Damn. Jeez, way back in the day, I used to get them for like 80, 81, and then they dropped to like 78, and I think they even dropped a little bit lower temporarily, and then they raised the prices back up, and then Wizards raised the prices on top of that, besides the distributor price. Also, this price varies between the distributors, uh, varies on account size, discounts, that kind of stuff, and it varies worldwide, and this is all USD, so you know, just a baseline in case you're interested. But yeah, nowhere listed in the entire product list is the collector's boosters, including the ones from Eldraine. So, 
Did they not go through normal channels? I don't know. I thought it wasn't a WPN allocated product. I don't know what the f is going on. Well, if you buy one booster on eBay right now, it's uh, 22 bucks for Throne of Eldraine. Or you can get a box of 12 for just over 250. So, uh, yeah, about 2150 a piece. I guess that's the going price now. I don't know what they were around launch because I didn't pay any attention because I didn't care. So I guess expect to pay around 20 a booster or something. I don't know. Who knows? This whole no MSRP thing is bullshit. It's really fucking annoying. I just found their original announcement article for the product and they said they expect them to range between 20 and 25. So I guess that's about right. So is this collector's booster an improvement over the last one? I'm going to lean towards yes with a little asterisk. I'll get to that in a second. Just because I remember with the old ones, like if you bombed out on this category, that line, that slot, this, 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 you could literally open like a 25 cent booster or that that's the value of the cards that you paid like 22 bucks for. And actually the probability stated that that was reasonably likely. That would not be some weird, like bad miracle anomaly. Or you could open a $200 one, which that level of variance, like that is gambling. It's like they want the FTC to be up their ass with a microscope. Like how stupid and careless is wizards right now? But they've added a guaranteed two foil fancy pantsy Nyx lands. So not just regular foil, because the regulars, I, I assume they're 25 to 50 cents all day. Um, but the, the foils, I mean, they, they got to be higher, a couple bucks at least. So you're going to get a couple bucks at least out of every collector's booster. So there's this floor propping it up to say, okay, you can really only lose this much because that slot, number 13 and 14 in the pack, are going to be guaranteed money. And people are going to want them. You're going to be able to trade them. If you open enough of them, you're going to be able to buy list them. Well, I guess, or sell them on eBay or TCG Player or Card Shark. Or Puka Trade if you're an idiot. And I mean, I, I do like that, but l let's get back to my asterisk. But this is a bullshit product. It should not exist. It's terrible. It's completely anti-consumer. It's completely trying to get underage people into gambling, not to mention above age people into gambling who might be susceptible to having problems with that and they f***ing know it because they know that the sales were higher when they had masterpieces but for some reason they're not bringing that back which well that might be a bit of a misnomer because they kind of did bring it back so um they just moved them to this product there, there's basically masterpieces in this it's the borderless and it's the uh showcase frames so if you remember uh, they started with lands, because those are the most expensive cards in Magic in general as as a group, obviously. Then I think they went to, wasn't it Famous Artifacts and then Famous Spells, I think, after that or whatever. But it kept going down. If you look at it, it was like an exact graph crashing into the ground. And then they said, well, we're discontinuing uh, Masterpieces because we're having trouble finding worthwhile cards to put in them. Because we just did it set after set after set after set. And it was true, they were having trouble finding worthwhile cards to put in them. You could actually open like a 7 or $8 masterpiece. And they said, we don't want somebody to pull some like 1 in a 1,000 ultra rare and it's worth 7 bucks. That's bullshit. So we're just not going to do them. Like that's basically an exact summary of what they publicly said. And everybody said, oh, here's an idea. Remember, you know, the Planeswalkers and the Gear Hulks and, you know, the, the really good spells from Amon Cat? How about you just do that? Because remember, with like a lot of them, it was uh, like 17-ish reprints, like expensive reprints from Magic's past, and then like five or more-ish cards from the current set. So if they just printed the Gear Hulks, and that was it, those were the only masterpieces, what's wrong with that? Or just take, you know, all 15 Mythics, because everybody knows almost every standard set has 15 Mythics in it. Take all 15 Mythics, and make them masterpieces. Make it so that you can open masterpiece versions of them. Yeah, you might still get a, a garbage one. Let's be honest, it would be the red one, because the red mythic is, is a meme at this point. Every set in the history of magic, I think, has a bad red mythic. It's some kind of weird obsession they have. But they're brand new cards, and they're playable right now in standard. Like, your odds of them being worth selling and worth opening are, like, way higher. In other words, if you're running out of reprints to do masterpieces, don't do reprints. I said, um, just pick, you know, there's like five card cycles, pick a five card cycle that's rare or higher and then do that. And then do all the planeswalkers, all the main characters. That's it. Leave it at that. Oh, wait, 
They literally did that, and they're calling them showcase frames. And then I'd say instead of putting them in normal boosters, they put them in the collector's boosters, but then it turns out they actually did put them in the normal boosters. You could pull the alternate versions, and also they weren't very rare, so they kind of screwed that up. But really, if you were to say, like, in the spirit of just the money and the rarity, the borderless planeswalkers are the masterpieces, and that they did move exclusively, I'm pretty sure, to the collector's boosters. So instead of saying, hey, we know how much you guys loved gambling even harder on the long shot, which was the Masterpiece cards, especially, you know, in BFZ where they were worth a fortune. Well, we brought them back, gave them a different name, and then put them in a separate product that costs way more so that you gamblers have to pay us more money. Like, it, it, it's really quite bad. That is not a pro-consumer thing to do. I say get rid of the collector's booster before the FTC investigates you for gambling. Because people in five packs can literally open an amount that would force you to fill out a tax form at a casino. Let's put it that way. People could buy a hundred bucks worth of collector's boosters and open a grand. And then normally they'd, they'd have to like pay the IRS a percentage of the value because of the gambling thing. Oh, but the secondary market isn't worth anything and wizards won't acknowledge it. Well, we all know that's bullshit, including the FTC. So if you really want to go up to the FTC and kind of poke them on the stick and dare them to investigate you for underage gambling with your known-to-be-already-compared-physical-item loot boxes, which, if you think about it, is even more real than a virtual loot box, which they're also cracking down on calling it gambling, this is the way to do it, to have, you know, one, two, three hundred dollar packs that somebody could open and not put an age restriction on the purchase and not consider it a Class B game or whatever it would be. Actually, yeah, I think it, I think it would be considered Class B in Wisconsin, I should say, which I believe is a category for scratch offs, bingo, and competitive poker. All of which, oddly enough, you have to be eighteen and up, not twenty one and up. Uh, Class C games are twenty one and up. I'm not sure I don't have those backwards, but um, yeah, these boosters are just high risk, high high loss, high reward uh, scratch off lottery tickets. I mean, that's all they are. And I'll be honest with you, it's not impossible for the odds to actually be in your favor, where if you open 10,000 of these, you sell the cards and make money. You know, because that's what single sellers do, but the odds don't matter. It's still it's still a risk. There's still a lot of money involved, a lot of money changing hands, and there's no age restriction on it. That is like painting a bullseye on your chest, Wizards of the Coast, while also screaming, hey, FTC, look what we're doing. So I can't wait for this to blow up in their face, but they've gotten so much backlash over this ancillary bullshit and these side products and stuff. I have a feeling that the lead time on this was too short and they've already canceled it. So we might see this collector's booster bullshit into like mid 2020. I mean, they could have it all designed, set all the artwork done and just cancel it like for Ikoria. I mean, it'd be some wasted money, but boy, if, if they're getting enough backlash from the people, hint, hint, wink, wink, you should give them some backlash about this. They might just do that. They might just dump it early. Or if or if they do get a little letter from the FTC saying, what is this new thing that has this giant high variance in ultra rares in it where we're talking about 12-year-olds waving it around on Facebook, look, I opened a $150 bill from this. Because, I mean, let's be honest, that's how easy it is to liquidate magic cards. They might as well be untraceable paper cash. So yeah, that, that's really the worst part about the collector's booster. Whether you think, oh, it's the perfect product for me and I love them and I'm a collector and I like shiny things and alternate art. I mean, so do I. Cool. Um, or yeah, I don't think the price is that bad, especially with the value you get. And oh, I don't even spend money on them. I use in-store credit I earned at FNM from winning. Like there's all kinds of responses to this, all kinds of takes on it. But at the end of the day, th they just really shouldn't be doing this. This is not a good product and it should not be a product. And I have a feeling that in the near future, it won't be a product, but what kind of more cash grabby, greedy, you know, anti-consumer shit do they have planned in the place of this? That's what I'm the most scared about. Sorry to leave you on that little ending, but there is nothing good about the direction they've been going in the last like two or three years. There just isn't. So on that cheery note, thanks for watching. Don't buy this product and I'll see you guys next video.